Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another, not an airbrushing step by step, this one is tips, tricks and information on this one because we painted that picture yesterday in a step by step and at the beginning I sort of took you through materials, you've seen the products, so it's sort of, I try and base the videos around so you get to see what products we're using, you get links so you can sort of source them products if you wanted to have a go, I'll leave you the image reference <clears throat> where I got it from so you can have a go at these these pictures. Now I watched this video back last night, sat there and watched it and thought right how can I make this video better for you guys to sort of break it down to understand because you see me paint it and I sort of talk you through and you can watch me paint it. It's all well and good doing that you just see me fly around with the brush and then you get comments going you make it look so easy. Now I wanted to break this down to make it look easy for you guys. So when you wanted to go on to something like this and give it a go, I'm gonna show you the ways you hold your brush to create the shapes, because that's all they are on these pictures, they're just shapes. Lines, shapes, dots, soft fades, that's all it is, and that's all you're practicing different strokes with your airbrush to move across to achieve things like this. Because looking at that, you'd look at it and think, oh no, how the hell am I going to paint that? It's like, how, how do you do it? And that's how you look at artwork. It's like, oh, how do I do it? It's like, there's no way I'm going to paint that. It's breaking it down. It's breaking that image down. You sort of break it down to sections. You strip the layers back and look at the shapes and how them shapes are toned and put on and then you've got to think of how you create them shapes, tones, textures with the brush or with the tools that you've got and that's why I always say use all the tools in your box. Don't just think I've got to use that. I mean yesterday was near enough 90% that with that because we can't do the erasing techniques and the scratch back techniques for the hair and the, them sort of little techniques that you bring into play when you do the photorealistic work. There's a lot that goes into it when you do photorealistic work. You're manipulating the paint. You're creating different textures with different tools. So using all the tools in your box is really good. And that's why I've sort of, on this portrait yesterday, it was like Posca paint pen. We used an eraser to knock out the lines afterwards. We've used shields to create sharp and soft edges. So when you look at artwork, <clears throat> just have a good look at your reference first and sort of sit there for an hour and study it and just go around and go home in on a piece like the eye and just break the eye down. Now, if you struggle <clears throat> to look at a reference and home in on something because you've seen too much of it, unless you hold it right up there and go, well, that's that bit and that's that bit. Cut yourself a square out of a piece of paper like that. That's like a two inch square out of a piece of white paper. And then just hold it up to the piece and pin it to the piece. If you can blank out the rest of your reference, blank it out and just home in on the eye. So you concentrate on that two inch square. So everything in that two inch square paint. So you see a shape there, you've got a round, you've got a circle, you've got lines, you've got soft shading, you've got a, a sharper edge, a softer edge, and break it down that way. Zoom in, you're basically zooming in and focusing on a two inch square, instead of trying to focus on that but you're seeing all this all the time when you look from there to there, there to there. You can just zoom in and go, right, I'm gonna work that piece. I'm gonna concentrate all my effort, zooming in, focusing on this. And then when you've achieved that one, move over to that one and then concentrate on that. And that looks less daunting just painting that than looking at the whole thing because you're moving in sections to paint that little bit of hair there. There's a few lines that way, there's one that way, there's a soft shade there, little bit of tone there. Move to that section there. 
just looks like a dark triangle there. When you look at the shapes and break them down, we've got some lines coming this way, lines going that way, dark. You just move it round to different bits on your piece of artwork and they're just shapes. That's all they are. It's a picture, but breaking it down and zooming in, it's just shapes, toned shapes. If you get your tones right, your colors right, and them shapes right, it just comes together. So I'm gonna move you in closer. I'll run through the paint mix with you because people have been saying about the ISO. I'm really digging the isopropanol mix at the minute. This is the one I'm using. It's not expensive. This is for a liter. Um, and it's 99.9%. .9%. I'll leave this in the link. Amazon, I think it worked out to about seven pound for a liter and it just works really, really well. So that's what I'm digging at the minute is that mix. I've mixed all my FW range, pre-mixed in the bottles. Now how I'm doing it is, I've got these small e-liquid bottles because I vape. Yes, it's bad for you, but I vape. Used to smoke, but I vape. These little bottles, you clean them out and they are brilliant for storing paint. They really are because you've got a tiny little pourer dropper here. You can pop the lids off, you can fit a ball bearing in it and you can mix your paint. Now, how I'm mixing this is, I'll mix it to a set consistency in the bottles and then I mix again when I put it in the airbrush. So I'm sort of splitting this bottle down into sort of three sections. I'll do paint or ink, then I'll do a section of water, and then I'll do the rest of it with ISO. So it's like equaled out. Put a little ball bearing in there, shaker, and you're good to go. Then when it comes to putting it in the brush, I'll do three or four drops, and then I'll just top it off with ISO. So it's really thinned out, and I mean, really thin that you can see there when i do that you can see how like thin it is in the actual pot and that's how i mix it so these little bottles of paint will last ages when i painted this one yesterday i used if you've got the custom takuma you'll know how big the cup is at the side i sort of mixed <clears throat> basically if i was to fill it up I would have like four mil from the top edge of the cup down. And that is it. That's how much paint I used, basically a full cup to achieve that. And that's on A3. And that was thinned out from these bottles. So I've not used loads. There's still loads left in this. So paint does go a long way. It really does. So that's the paint mix that I used. And I always say, put yourself a piece of paper at the side. You don't want to be going straight in, dialing your air pressure in, go blast, blast, and then go there. And seeing what your spray pattern's like going here, you go here first. You move to the side, you test your paint, see how it's atomizing at different distances. You want to see what the paint's like going right up close. So you always see me do like a little test with that paint mix on detail, real fine going up. I usually go dagger strokes, tiny ones, if the paint achieves at low pressure, real tight, clean dagger strokes right up, I think, yeah, that's good, it's doing that. Then I'll see what it's like backing off about two inches away, soft pattern, have a look at the pattern, look up close. If you're getting a nice soft transition on that outer part of that cone of the spray, when you put your line down, if it's nice and soft at the edges, if it passes that test, yeah, good to go. A consistent line, then do a consistent line close and back to way. So do a line right up close, consistent all the way down like that. Have a look at that line. If there's breaks and splutters in that line, you know you've got to tweak it. If it's consistent, smooth line with no breaks, that's another one right. If the paint's passed that test. Then do the same again backing off a bigger line and just see what the atomization, if, you pa if, the, if your paint passes all them little tests on that first, you can go straight in, you've got your paint mix dialed in, you've got your air pressure dialed in, 
you're good to go. Then you can then you can commit. You're gonna you know you can have no dramas with that paint when you're using it. None whatsoever. You will paint the whole portrait like I did, and I had no dramas with the paint. None. I wasn't going backwards and forwards, tip dry, fiddling around, thinning again, thinning again, shaking around, cleaning the brush out. No dramas. Got it right there. Moving on to your piece of paper. That's the first headache out the way. So I'll move you in a little bit closer and we'll go through some of the brush techniques and strokes that I use to create this. Right guys, so I've got some paint. Just drop some of this. And this is the one that I've mixed in the pot. So I'm just gonna give this a little back bubble and bubble up. Because I did leave paint in the brush last night and I always say to you, clean your brush out, but the temperature in the studio wasn't warm. I knew it was cooling down and I had the lid on the cup. So I knew the paint wasn't gonna go anywhere bad. So as I say, when you do your test, I'll do the test bit on here so you see it a little bit clearer. So I'm about two inches away. And that's a pass on the paint. Now, when I look at that paint, it is extremely soft here. Around that outside, it just fades to nothing, fades into the white. That's a real nice atomized paint at low PSI. And this is low. So the paint's running good so far. I'm gonna do the same thing and just try little dagger strokes like that. Just check your paint. Now going down that low, it's absolutely fine. It's working really well. They're clean. Some of them ones are a bit dodgy where I've just dialed in my finger on my trigger and then just start to get them better as I work along. But it's working nice there. Consistent line. Absolutely fine. Nice and clean, consistent. There's no stop start in the paint. It's just atomizing the paint nice. The brush is flowing well. You can tell that as well. You'll hear it. If your paint's too thick, it'll be it'll just sound grainy, it'll sound choked up. It'll sound like an old school mini when you've got the choke and you're pulling the choke out, you can hear the engine going blah, 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 like that. Similar sort of thing. Till you get that flow right, you get that nice consistent there. Then you can back off. You can do the same again like that. Clean, atomized, nice. So you've tested like that, backing off. Atomize is nice. Up close, nice tight details with it. Consistent line, no breaks. Backing off consistent line, no dramas. That paint in that brush is absolutely spot on. Good to go. You can just go straight in on your artwork now. Put your lid on. And all you've got to do now is, is just while you're painting, what you're going to see when you're painting for a while You'll get tip dry. It all goes on your room condition, how warm your room is. We all get it. And you will start to see that, 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 and that change when you get tip dry. The minute you get tip dry, when it comes to doing soft shading and backing off, you're gonna to start to get speckles and grainy when you've got tip dry to achieve that. When you've got tip dry, and come to achieve that on your artwork, a line that's continuous, you'll get breaks. You'll get spitter, grainy breaks. When you come down to do little tiny details like this, when your brush has got tip dry on the front of it, it'll be like you're pulling the trigger back more to release paint. You'll be like trying, you'll, you'll feel your finger going further and further and further back, and then the paint comes. So you instantly know when you're going up on detail, the more you have to move your trigger back to get that little bit of paint out, you know you've got an issue at the front, so just double check for your tip dry. And this is why I always say, have that there. Paint for a bit. If you are getting a little bit of tip dry, stop, look. You'll see your needle, usually when you pinch it and do that, 
you'll see the chrome part of it. You'll see that shininess on the needle. It will just reflect a little bit of light and you're like, yeah, that's clean. Or you can just have a quiet look up. When you start seeing tip dry, it starts to darken off. So just a little pinch or a little blast on that because that works great. Little blast through. So pinch it, do that a couple of times. Push a bit of air out and give it a little blast of paint and do that. Test you're good to go again. You can do that little test again like that. You can do a little test again with dagger strokes. Back in, commit to your artwork. So they're the things you've got to keep a check of with your brush first and foremost is that. Just keep reminding yourself, check, check. If you start seeing that break up, that looking spitter, pulling the trigger back too much to create that, breaking up the same on that, you know you've got tip dry and you will you will see this in your artwork when you're painting. You will feel these different things that I said when you're trying to pull back more to create that little stroke, that paint isn't flowing, it's here. Just gotta check that. So that's one thing to check. Now, moving in on this portrait and some of the techniques that you need to practice on a blank piece of paper before you start going in on your artwork and giving it a, an actual go of it, Dagger strokes, when it came to the hair, you're doing dagger strokes. Everyone says dots, lines, dagger strokes, and they are key things to learn with the airbrush, they really are. And then dots, lines, and dagger strokes can be done at all different distances like this. So shading, <clears throat> we've just done that one there, it's a two inch pass. Now for a face, when we were doing the soft shading around the face, because it's a big area, the first thing you need to do is move back yourself. Position you yourself away from your artwork. So you move back about a foot and a half away from your piece of paper. So you distance your eyes away from it. That's the first thing you need to do. So you can see more of your picture. You can see that bigger area that you're having to aim at with your brush. And then you distance your brush to create how much paint you want to come down. So if I was doing a face that was like the size that we were working on yesterday, this sort of size there, I would back the brush off a good six to seven inches away to create that very light pass. Now you can see that there going down really light. That's how I was toning her face yesterday. And I'm basically just going on and off the trigger, but moving with the brush. When I wanted to come down on that jawline and bring that darker tone on the jawline, you're moving in and you're going a light pass first and going over the same pass. That bit that came around her jawline, that dark line that came around her jawline. That's how I created that. It's like soft transition. The bit under the jawline, where it's a darker and a sharper edge, you would then move your shield up and you'll do the same pass again, but you're creating that. So that would be the bottom part of a jawline there. So you've got that sharper edge with the dark tone underneath it. And then you started to see them shadows that come under her jawline. You're backing off again and you're creating that. So you're just building that tone up at the bottom of the jawline. So if that's her neck coming down like this, That's the side of a jaw, neck coming down, and that's underneath the chin. So you're darkening that off because this piece is further forward. That piece sits back. When you look at a human face, that neck goes in two inches. This bit sits two inches forward. So that would be more in shadow. That would be hitting more light source. So you darken that off. But then you put that nice sort of sharp edge to separate that from that, but then just darken that. So that's how you'd achieve that piece and like that. When it comes to sort of like the hair textures, and I say dagger strokes, you're basically doing that movement, but you're just going up closer. So you are creating them 
point to points like that. So a lot of the hair strokes on this portrait yesterday were shapes like that. They were shapes that way, going that way with the brush. And I was basically just doing this, going over, going over, building it up, building it up, going at different distances to create tighter lines, backing off slightly to create softer ones and blending them all together and giving it that rolled effect by giving it a little bit more paint here and then giving it a little bit more paint here darkening this edge up here just doing dagger strokes darkening it up here like that doing some darker passes like that and that's how we created the sort of hair texture the rolled edges going from dark a little bit lighter in the middle and then going back to dark but giving that soft transition here soft transition here and you're just putting loads and loads of different tighter lines broader lines and just creating them textures going like that so it's moving with your brush dagger strokes so all the hair is, is that, point to point, line. And you're just overlaying, 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 and then creating that same that, but you are doing it smaller. You're doing that same stroke, but smaller. And that bit would go there, that bit would go sort of there, along here and along here. So they're the sort of shapes there when it comes to filling things in that have got sharp edges, so say you wanted to fill a circle in, but you wanted like a, say, well, let's just do a rough circle here, probably a dodgy circle. You go round it like that with a shield. So you've created your sharp edge all the way around, and then you could start center if you wanted to shade that in and you can just move the trigger and just fill up to them darker lines on the outside. Fill it in nice and even. You're not going over this edge because you've got a nice one to go up against. You've already got that dark edge. You just fill in the center. So creating sharps on images and soft edges. <clears throat> it's just looking at your image, studying it like the bottom of the jawline, right, I need a sharp. That's how I created the sharp, by doing that, spraying that way, to create that sharp that way. If you want one that way, you do the same that way. It's the same when you do round circle. If you wanna go round the eye, you can use the inner of the shield that way. To give you that bit around the inner of the eye, then you'd have your pupil say in the center like that. And then this bit here would probably be textures, little lines coming out, textures going round like that. And you've got your darker edge around the, the eye there, that bit in the center. And then you would achieve your other bit like we did with the Posca paint pen. It's a rough looking eye, but you'd have your little white highlight or whatever the reflection is on the center of the eye, you'd do it that way. So it's just creating all these sort of shapes and shading, backing off with the brush. You're gonna get soft, bringing it closer, same paint, same movement on the trigger. You're gonna create that darker line. Going up where you need a dot, pinpoint one, backing off a wider one. All these shapes are moving with the brush different ways, holding shields, soft, sharp, soft, sharp, all goes into your piece of artwork. So all these little techniques, guys, it looks really weird looking at it like this to practice, but all these little bits I just sort of showed you there where you move back to shade, you can use a shield to drop a sharp line and where it went. You're just adapting all them sort of techniques with a brush. This is why I always say, when you practice with your brush, practice moving with it. Don't be too static. 
and light press and just like a robot. You've got to move. Think of like when you're sketching with a pencil and you're moving. You've got to move with that brush. So when you do them like broad passes and then passes with light, you're putting soft shading down. You don't want to be doing it like this. You want to just like move with the brush and angle the brush because wherever you angle that brush, you can create different ways of the way that paint lays down. If you go straight on, you know you're going to get like that straight on line. If you angle to the side, you can get that nice soft fade out where you fade it across and you can get that gradient that goes from like a darker to a light. You can achieve that by just moving your brush, different angles, different distances. But definitely practice that before you commit. Do your little test where you do a consistent up close, do a consistent backing off, go in doing the dagger strokes tiny, do solid passes like that and look at how, look at what your paint's doing. Listen to your brush, the sound, set your pressure and just look at what your paint's doing. See how it lays down. Once you get it to do that, that, that and that, consistent, Half the challenge is done there and then because then you can just move in. You've not got to worry about your brush. The only thing you've got to worry about then is tip dry. And then you will see, like I said, you will know when you've got tip dry because if you go to achieve that when you've got tip dry, it'll break up. When you go to do real tight details when you've got tip dry, you'll go right in and your trigger is going to be moving way, way back because you're trying to push paint around that tip that's got a lot of paint dried up on it. So your nozzle is, the needle's moving back into that nozzle with paint on it, and you're trying to push paint around that dried up tip, so you're having to move back further and further to open more and more of the hole up at the front to get that paint out, to get that tiny minimal bit of paint out. And that's when you can start getting splatters coming out or you'll doff a load of paint out quick because that tip dry will suddenly clear and go wallop and you'll get dirty marks on your artwork. So little tests like that with your paint with your brush and then when you are painting and you just feel like you're moving your trigger that little bit further back for that paint release you've got tip dry. Instantly move away, check your tip because we all get carried away as beginners. We want to keep painting, want to keep painting. It's like, and you get really into it. You've achieved something in the first half an hour. You're thinking, yeah, that's really good. You're not looking at your brush or checking. You're thinking that, yeah, I've got the paint flow right, yeah. And then you're going, you don't realize you're going further and further and further and further back to get that little bit of paint because you're a newbie. And then wallop, all that paint goes boff and it just goes splatter over the piece. You'll probably spend three hours to try and achieve something, and that's when the frustration kicks in. So little guidelines like that, if you stick to them set processes and drum them into your head, test, test, shapes, practice, 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 you take all that with you to that, and then that just, just becomes easy. It really does. So references. <clears throat> cut a square of piece of paper out, as I say, cut, cut some a hole out of piece of paper, move it across and focus on just that one piece. And move around your artwork like that if that helps you. If you struggle with looking from that to that, going from, because you're focusing here and then you're moving across and then you're trying to focus back on that. It's that pinpoint, pinpoint, pinpoint between the two. And this is where it can really, really strain your eyes. Another good thing to do is as well is paint for say half an hour, walk away. Come back with fresh eyes because you don't realize how much focus and concentration you put into doing pieces of artwork when you're airbrushing because you are really trying to home in on every small detail. When you look at pictures and you see the whole thing, <clears throat> it's like, yeah, it's a woman's face. 
And then when you think on how you have to paint it and you go in and in and in and in, in, you go, right, well, there's a tiny little shade there. There's that little mark there, that tiny little eyebrow hair there. It's, you're really focusing down. It does take a lot out of your eyes. Be very, very careful with your eyes. I used to paint with no glasses and I could be like bang all day, every day, bang, 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 paint here, paint, paint, paint. Now it's, I'm like trying to focus glasses. It does beat your eyes up. So if you're young and you're starting out, be warned when you're older, you will have glasses probably end up like whiskey tumblers strapped to your head because this batters your eyes if you're doing this day in, day out, day in, day out, it's like anything. If you're permanently working on a laptop screen all day in an office, I guarantee it by the time you hit your forties, your eyes are going to be screwed because you're permanently like this. So just be careful of your eyes, get, get checked. I've got new glasses coming, waiting for them, which is gonna be nice because I'm have to have two pairs. Distance is absolutely fine. This stuff, I have to have a set distance for airbrushing because I'm, I'm usually working right up. And then one for when I'm editing because I'm usually on a tablet editing a certain distance away. So just be careful of your eyes. So I hope this has helped you out. Uh, don't get overwhelmed by your pieces of artwork, really don't. Set yourself challenges. Don't go balls out straight away when you're a beginner and go, right, I'm gonna paint that. A complete novice, I'm gonna paint that. Baby steps, just practice this follow them guidelines of with your brush just clean brush you will get clean work a cake top brush that you're abusing and don't care about you leave paint in it and it's covered in paint on the side dried up you're going to get dirty work and you work and it will show so regimental clean your brush set your paint mix Set your air pressure. Test to the side before you commit. Practice the dagger strokes, the dots, the lines, the shapes, holding shields. Practice moving with your brush, one-handed, moving in, holding shields and distancing yourself. Practice both hands on your brush. Yesterday I stood up, I was standing up yesterday to do the hair on here because I couldn't get the movement sitting down. So I thought, right, I've got to stand up. And you will get this, you will have to adapt your body or move your piece of artwork around to what suits you best. You might be better at doing a dagger stroke that way, left or right, easier than doing it another way. And if it means moving that piece of artwork around for you to achieve that movement, do it. It's whatever, you've got to make yourself comfortable when you do this. Don't put yourself in an awkward position where you think, because it will show, it, that will show on your artwork. You'll instantly know if someone's good at an angle certain one way or the other, because you, it'll see in the artwork. So move your piece of artwork around or move yourself. Put yourself into comfortable positions when you paint and you'll enjoy it more. So hope this has helped you out on this bit here, on things on like a breakdown, how you achieve it. If you've not seen the step-by-step -step on that, it was yesterday's video, guys, it's on the channel. So have a watch of that, and then you can relate to this video, moving over to this one, on the breakdown of this, and some of the techniques and things you need to master to go in on that. So thanks for watching, drop your comments. Really enjoy getting your feedback. If you're new to the channel and you are liking this style of content, the step-by-steps, Click that subscribe, that's all you gotta do. It's not gonna cost you anything. Just click the subscribe. Press the notification so you get notified on the next one coming up because there's always stuff coming up through the week. Try and get as much content out as I can for you guys. Um, thanks again for all the support. The channel is progressing. Got some really cool stuff coming up. I'm gonna just run through that now. I've been sent out some crystal effects. This is a different formula and I've seen the uh, test panel from the person that sent me out. So I'm looking forward to doing a 
test pan on a piece of artwork with the crystal effects for you guys. We've got that one coming up and we've got a giveaway coming up as well. There's going to be a giveaway coming up. Got an email yesterday. I've got some gallery of brushes coming, which they've kindly said they'd like to do for the channel. So we've got a giveaway on a couple of gallery of brushes. So that's going to be coming up. So you've got the chance to get hold of two gallery of brushes. So they're going to be a giveaway on the channel coming up. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh,